Welcome back, Defenders. Jake here. I've got good news and I've got bad news. It's a good news, bad news kind of video today. Let's start with the good news. U.S. Defense Secretary announces a $6 billion military aid package for Ukraine. Now, $6 billion is a lot of money, so I think a significant portion of this money is going towards purchasing agreements with manufacturers. The United States can either give old weapons and then use money to buy ourselves new weapons, or we can just buy new weapons for Ukraine. The United States does both. So $6 billion is a lot of money, and when you go on the DOD's website, they announce what's in the security assistance package. But when you look at what they're announcing, this does not add up to $6 billion. Now they do say, first line item, additional munitions for Patriot air defense systems. But they're not announcing new Patriot air defense systems. I find this hard to believe given that a Patriot battery system comprised of 10 or 11 vehicles is $1.1 billion. It's like the most expensive thing everyone's trying to get to Ukraine. So Ukraine's not getting nuclear submarines or stealth bombers or aircraft carriers. How do you get to $6 billion? And I'm convinced the United States is purchasing as well as donating Patriot systems, but they're just not going to announce it. Because these Patriot launchers are being used for offensive purposes, they don't want to give the Russians any additional information about how many systems are going into Ukraine and where they could possibly be located. Also interesting in this package was announced components to support Ukrainian domestic production of uh, unmanned aerial systems and other capabilities. This is the game we're playing with the Russians where we say Western weapons can't be used on Russian territory. But at the same time, we're supplying all the components for Ukraine to make their own domestically produced drones and missiles that are then used on Russian territory. Tomato, tomato. Lots of videos online of equipment in motion. This is a convoy near the Polish-Ukrainian border of M777 howitzers on the move. These might be brand new artillery systems being donated, or these were all repaired and are now returning to Ukraine. Here's an interesting video from Dmitry at War Translated. It's two minutes long. I'll link it down below. But it's basically just a Russian in Germany. This person might be pro-Russian. Filming a convoy heading east. So this is equipment moving from Germany to Poland most likely on its way to Ukraine, and this Russian-speaking person in Germany is just astonished how much uh, equipment is moving on this uh, German highway. So Russia knows it's a game, it's a race now. How fast can the logistics network get artillery shells and drones and armored vehicles to the front lines? So they concentrated uh, a missile attack two nights ago, on Ukraine's rail network. Russia targets Ukraine railways as Western aid due to arrive. Russia is trying to press its advantage on the battlefield before their May 9th Victory Day parade. Now when you attack a rail line, it's just going to be repaired in a day or two. But if a train can't go over that track for a day or two, that might help Russia advance in the Donbass region in the short term. So here's a breakdown of the missile attack from two nights ago. 32 missiles were launched, 21 were shot down. These are still not great percentages, but as Ukraine's air defense missile supplies are restocked, these percentages will get better, and Russia won't be as successful with their attacks. So let's talk about the bad news. Ukraine army commander says the situation has worsened. Outnumbered and outgunned, Ukrainian forces struggle to hold Russians from breaking through at certain points in the Donbass region. Ukraine currently has a manning shortage, and they're being outfired 10 to 1. 
So some people want honest assessments of how bad it is at the moment. Here's a post from Cossack Gundy. He is a British national who was a Ukrainian Marine in the Azovstal. He was part of the negotiated surrender of the Marines hiding in the steel factory. He was a Russian prisoner of war who was eventually freed and exchanged. But here's his uh, post on Twitter. Enough with the nonsense claiming the front line is stable in certain areas. I'm fed up with hearing propaganda lines from those who should be more informed. While we mock Russian propaganda, I refuse to sugarcoat the reality. Back in Avdivka, people insisted everything was fine, but it was far from it. The shortage of artillery ammunition was a significant issue, and stability won't come overnight. Brace yourselves for at least another week of uncertainty, depending on how swiftly logistics reach the front lines. I think it's probably going to be more than a week, two, three, or even a full month, before individual units have all the resources they need to stop these Russian attacks. Russia knows they're on the clock. So if you watch my channel, you probably know my personal philosophy. I don't like giving map updates because they don't really matter in the big strategic perspective. Every time Russia loses 30 armored vehicles to gobble up one tree line or one wheat field, that's not really changing the course of the war. And to prove my point, here's a map of all the territory Russia controlled exactly one year ago. And here's the map of all the territory that Russia controls today. After six months of the United States not helping Ukraine. So if you want to see it again, this is what the Russians controlled one year ago. And after taking hundreds of thousands of casualties, meat wave attack after meat wave attack, constant attacks, this is what the Russians control today. Russians established foothold in part of Ocheretny in eastern Ukraine. So we'll do it. You know, I hate zooming in and then looking at these individual tree lines. Like this is, this is like one wheat field right here. But yes, the Russians managed to break through at a certain point and they captured this small village. It causes problems for the Ukrainian defenders to the south and to the north if the Russians can continuously resupply the unit that got in there. So I'm going to give you the Ukrainian military perspective. I gave you Cossack Gundy, but this is what Ukrainian leadership is telling their people on Ukrainian state TV. What do you know about the situation in Ocheretny? This is the Donetsk region. I will give you the latest information now. Yes, indeed, the enemy managed to break through and gain a foothold in a certain part of this settlement. At the moment, this part is under our fire control. All measures are being taken to kick the enemy out. And heavy fighting is ongoing. The situation is under control of the defense forces. It should also be emphasized that in order to build on this tactical success in the area, to further extend our defense, the enemy has deployed four brigades of the Russian armed forces in this area. On our part, we are taking all measures to stabilize the situation in the Avdivka sector and regain control over Ocheretny. For this purpose, additional forces and means from the reserves have been deployed. Ukraine just needs shells. If they can just get more artillery shells, the Russians won't be able to advance. According to the Institute for the Study of War, Russian forces pose a credible threat to seizing Chasov Yar. Now, the rumor out of the Kremlin is that Putin himself ordered his top military commanders that they had to capture the village of Chasov Yar prior to the May 9th Victory Day Parade. Putin's inauguration, re-inauguration, is on May 7th, but by May 9th, he wants his military to take Chasov Yar. Bakhmut was taken over a year ago, 
to go from this city to this village is about five kilometers. And with direct attacks for over a year, Russia still can't even take Chasavyar. Speaking of the parade, Kremlin to showcase captured Western weapons in Moscow ahead of the parade. Leopard tanks, Martyr and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, and other various Western military equipment are now on display in Moscow. So here's the video. Let me show this clip for you first. <laughs> This is a silly thing for the Russians to do for numerous reasons. The first one being Ukraine has already done this. This was Ukraine's idea two years ago. But Russia is supposed to be the world's second most powerful military. Russia is not fighting NATO. Russia is fighting Ukraine. This is a war that Russia chose. And the reason why Ukrainians put Russian armored vehicles on display is because they can't have a real parade. If Ukraine tried to have a real military parade, the Russians would bomb it. So by putting captured armored vehicles on display, Putin is basically admitting it's not safe to have a normal May 9th Victory Day parade. They've already canceled the planes, you know, the aviation flyovers the last two years because it's not safe. Last year, they had one single tank, uh, the, the T-30-something. So what's Russia's May 9th parade going to look like this year? We're going to find out together, but they have to keep scaling it back because Russia's getting their asses kicked. Ukraine strikes oil refineries and an airfield overnight in the Krasnodar region. Krasnodar is... Uh, northwest of the Caucasus. This is southeast of Ukraine. And once again, videos online. The reports are that Ukraine launched about 66 drones to attack oil refineries and an airbase. Russia says they shot everything down successfully, but then what caused the fires, Russia? Once again, pictures and videos online. This video right here is pretty interesting, given that you can see in the debris components of glide bombs. So Ukraine somehow got the intelligence where these were being manufactured, and they blew up the warehouse. They blew up the facility, taking this offline. This was another oil refinery, this time in Slavyansk. This one was not successfully struck, but there was an attempted strike. This caused the facility to shut down production to minimize damage if a drone did hit one of the towers. So even when Ukraine doesn't succeed, this still impedes Russia's war machine and hurts their revenue. Here's an interesting satellite image from the Ukrainian strike on the Smolensk oil depot. This was back on the 24th. We now have satellite images and this is the before, this is the after. It's going to take time. It's going to take the rest of the year. But eventually Ukraine is going to get all of this. Russia can't stop it. Russia can't protect it. And this image appeared online showing cope cages around their oil depots. But in my amateur opinion, I think this is a doctored photograph. It just looks too pixelated and grainy. It didn't come from any credible source. I think this is a fake image, but... It wouldn't surprise me if Russia saw this and said, that's a good idea. Let's find a way to put cope cages around all of our oil depots. This is going to be very disappointing news, but GLSDB has proven to be an operational failure in Ukraine. This idea from Boeing and Saab, it was supposed to be one of these small diameter bombs strapped to a rocket motor, GPS guided. It's a ground launch version of a JDAM. JDAMs are normally launched from planes. And I'm going to show you a clip from Dr. William LaPlante. 
He's the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment. So this is as high as you go in the DOD on this subject. He was at uh, some kind of forum being asked about successes and failures in Ukraine. And he mentioned to the public for the first time that GLSDB was a failure. On the other hand, <laughs> I have another story which would have been, that was the first three chapters were like, here's a success story. We, some one company, I won't say who they are, but they came up with a really cool idea of taking an air-to-ground weapon and doing a ground launch version of it, and uh, it, would, it would be a long-range fire weapon. And uh, they raced and did it as fast as they could. We, uh, we even limited the, the testing in this country. We said, look, just test for safety, otherwise the operational testing will be non-cooperative with the Russians. <laughs> and so then uh, we sent it to the Ukrainians. It didn't work. Um, it didn't work for multiple reasons, including uh, EMI environment, including just really the dirt and doing it on ground, the TTPs, the dot mill, it just didn't work. And what happens is when you send something to people in the fight of their lives, it doesn't work, they'll try it three times and then we'll just throw it aside. So that's happened too. So Boeing and Saab tested for safety, but operational testing was non-cooperative with the Russians on the battlefield. And because of the electromagnetic environment, all the interference, the GPS guidance was never working. Apparently also just the wear and tear of the trucks. GLSDB can never hit its targets in a real operational environment. Disappointing. And I think uh, this might have contributed to Biden finally green lighting attackums in February. So if GLSDB showed up beginning of the year, Ukraine tried to use it, proved it couldn't work in a real-world environment, that's when I think the White House finally said we need to send more attackums. Biden made that decision in February. Some were delivered in March. There was the strike on the airfield in Jonkoy. But it's coming. Big strikes from attackums are coming soon. I'll link this clip down below if you want to watch more of it. This was a pretty interesting forum uh, on the channel Center for Strategic and International Studies. Let's now get to the good news for Ukraine. Belgium will allocate 200 million euros for the German-led air defense initiative to supply Ukraine with more rockets. Thank you so much to the people of Belgium. Spain will provide Ukraine with additional Patriot missiles. Spain only has a limited number, 50 apparently in their reserves, but they'll probably send 20 to 30 of those to Ukraine. Thank you so much, Spain. Norway plans to provide 13 million for maintaining Leopard 2 tanks at a Polish maintenance center. Thank you so much to the people of Norway. Canada will donate 3 million Canadian dollars to Ukraine's uh, domestic drone production as well as kick in $13 million to the Czech-led Artillery Initiative. Thank you so much to the people of Canada. Australia announced a $100 million aid package for Ukraine. $50 million of the funding will be directed towards Ukraine's air defense systems, $30 million for purchasing drones, and then another $15 million for other various equipment. Thank you so much to the people of Australia. Final couple clips I have for you. The first one always puts a smile on my face. This is another Soviet monument dedicated to the Great Patriotic War being demolished in Rivni. The statue will be melted down and sold. Money, be, money will be used to buy drones for the Ukrainian military. That's always satisfying. Final clip I have for you is an update from Richard Woodruff, the first group of Ukrainian defenders to go on this therapy retreat in the Carpathian Mountains. Uh, they went through their five-day trip, and I want to read for you this po post from Richard. Thank you so much to the Jake Bro community for Vid Nova 2024. 
the support of your incredible YouTube community, raised over $18,000. $8,000 was immediately transferred to pay for the events, as well as pay for three further events. That is a further 36 Ukrainian soldiers that will get a break from their hospital beds because of all of you, the hundreds of people who donated to Richard's uh, campaign. So here's a video they filmed to thank you. Thank you very much to Jake Bro and his incredible YouTube community for more than funding the whole of Vidnova 2024. As we come to the end of our five day break, rehabilitation break in the Carpathian mountains for our heroes from the front lines, we just all wanted to say, Duje, Duje, to Jake personally, the FLK family, and to the 426 of you from 15 countries that donated to make this all possible. Slava Ukraine! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.